What's going on guys, it's your boy Dom Camp here and today we are back here with another Dom Camp Sports Podcast. This is the NBA playoffs guys that we are covering and we have the Washington Wizards versus the Toronto Raptors. I actually guys did not know they played. They played today so that was a surprise. After this I will have the Milwaukee Bucks and Boston Celtics recap for you all and then later on tonight we have the New Orleans Pelicans and the Portland Trailblazers so guys it's a pretty interesting interesting NBA playoff so far up until this point and it gets even more interesting with this news right here so the final score in this game number two for the Toronto Raptors and Washington Wizards the Toronto Raptors ended up winning 130 to 119 in a amazing game guys we move down to the box score real quick jump straight into it let's look at the Wizards starting out the Wizards have um, here, Markeith Morris, there we go, yeah, yeah, Markeith Morris, 28 minutes played, 3 for 7 from the field, 0 for 2 from 3 point range, 2 steals, a block, and 6 points for Markeith Morris in 28 minutes, 25 minutes for Otto Porter Jr., 5 for 10 from the field, 2 for 2 from the free throw line, 3 steals, and 12 points. Marcin Gortat had 12 minutes played in total, zero points out of the entire game and only three rebounds, but he did only play 12 minutes, so of course, that's not enough to um, make it happen, you know, so pretty interesting right there for him. John Wall, though, absolutely went crazy, 32 minutes played, 9 for 17 from the field, 0 for 2 from three-point range, but 11 for 11 from the free throw line, 9 assists, 4 turnovers, and 29 points, so he was the leading scorer for the entire team of the Washington Wizards. Moving down to Bradley Bill, who wasn't the best this game in game number two of the series. Um, 25 minutes played, 3 for 11 from the field, 1 for 5 from the three-point line, and 4, no, 9 points in total, guys. So John Wall tried to take over the game, but unfortunately they could not come out on top against the high-powered Toronto Raptors offense of performance. Um, Then we go down to the bench trying to see his name his name is Mike Scott yes Mike Scott six eight power forward for the Wizards off the bench six man 20 points in this game he was the leading scorer off the bench but Oubre Jr. and Lawson both had 14 apiece so not bad for the Wizards bench but it wasn't enough for them to get the victory in that sense Michael Mike Scott seven for ten from the field 27 minutes four for five from three 20 points, 4 rebounds, not bad from him off the bench, but it's unfortunate for them that it wasn't in a resulting uh, victory, in the result of a victory. (laughs) 42 for 86 from the field in total, 48.8%. 10 for 22 from the three-point line, 45.5%. 25 for 28 from the free throw line, that is 89.3%, so 89%. And that all totaled to 119 points for the Wizards, not the best, um... That's a lot of points. That's a lot of points to put up, but if you're going up against a high-powered offense, which I'm going to look at right now in the uh, Toronto Raptors, you will notice that this is why they scored 130 on the Washington Wizards' heads. So, we go to the box score for the Raptors. Serge Ibaka, 31 minutes played, 4 for 11 from the field, 1 for 3 from the 3-point line, 9 rebounds, 3 blocks, 10 points. An all-around performance from Ibaka, over 30-plus minutes played. Not the best shooting performance, but he did definitely uh, provide rebounds and blocks on the defensive end of the game. Beautiful, plus 32, plus or minus is a plus 32 for Ibaka as well. That's it. That's awesome. Then we move down to, I'm going to look at his first name because I didn't say it last um, matchup. They played Og Nanubo. Nog Nubi. Hopefully I said it correctly. He played for the Raptors. He's actually from the United Kingdom. I think that's what it said, right? Oh, oh, yes. He was born in England. Okay. He ended up uh, having a pretty good game himself. 19 minutes played, 2 for 3 from the field, 4 for 5 from the free throw line, as well as 9 points in total. Not bad, not bad. Jonas Valanciunas, this guy is a menace. Starting center for the Raptors, 23 minutes played, 8 for 11 from the field, uh, 14 rebounds, and 19 points. So he did crack himself a double-double, have to... Give him credit there. In 23 minutes, he got a double-double. That's pretty dang good, in my opinion, especially since that's pretty much only two quarters of play. So the rest of the the two quarters, he was chilling 
and he ended up getting a double double in in the minutes he had. But then we go down to Kyle Lowry, not the best shooting night for him. Three for ten from the field out of 36 minutes in total play. One for eight from the three point line. Six for seven from the free throw line. Seven rebounds. Twelve assists. 13 points. Almost had a triple double. He was flirting with a triple double if he would have got three more rebounds in the 36 minutes he played, trying to help his team with the victory. But then we go to the name that everybody knows and the person who absolutely lit up the scoreboard this evening. DeMar DeRozan, 37 minutes played, 14 for 23 from the field, 3 for 6 from three point range, 6 for 8 from the free throw line, 5 rebounds, 4 assists. 37 points. His plus or minus was plus 23. So a great game from DeMar DeRozan. He took a lot of shots, but he ended up making a lot of them as well. So that's why he almost dropped 40 points on the Wizards. And a shooting guard who was guarding him was Bradley Beal. So he's not necessarily a defensive player. So it kind of makes sense for DeMar DeRozan to go off like he did. Then we look at the bench unit, guys. And the leading scorer for the bench was, I believe his name is... Yes, I was right. C.J. Miles. C.J. Miles. Absolute amazing game from him. 22, 22 minutes played. 5 for 7 from the field. 4 for 6 from the 3-point line. 4 for 4 from the free throw line. 18 points. So great play there by C.J. Miles in this game. A small forward in the lineup. Moving on, guys, to the overall stats, and I'll end it at that. 45 for 87 from the field, 51.7% for the uh, Raptors, 13 for 35 from the three-point line, 37.1%, and 27 for 33 from the free throw line, 81.8%. So they did get a lot of free throws, got a lot of contact, as you will see with Kyle Lowry and DeMar DeRozan getting to the free throw line at will pretty much. And the new Nimby. Man, the new... Now, just say Og. Okay, Og, he ended up getting to the free throw line five times, so not bad at all. But, guys, that is a wrap for the Washington Wizards and Toronto Raptors. I'm actually shocked that they played tonight three games, guys. So, three podcasts for you all this evening. So, I hope you guys enjoy. This has been a wrap 130 to 119. The Raptors are going to Washington with a two game series league. Series league, series lead. <laughs> My apologies, and we're gonna have to see what they can do to capitalize on that home court advantage. Let's see if the Washington Wizards will put up a fight, or will they just slouch over and let the Raptors sweep them in four games? Well, we'll have to see coming soon. They actually play. Uh, let me check real quick. They play. Oh, chill out. Uh, game three is on the 20th, so on Friday they play again, guys. So a three-day break. Luckily. Both of the times are the same in on the East Coast and in Canada, so they won't be jet lagged at all. But that is it, guys. Thank you for listening to this podcast. I will be back with the Milwaukee Bucks and Boston Celtics. They are in the fourth quarter, 11 minutes to go. So, guys, I will be letting you know. It looks like a running, runaway game for Boston so far, though. That is it. Thank you for listening, and I will talk to you guys later. Peace, guys. <laughs>